World Network. Let's just take a few minutes to get present. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it for a couple seconds. And as you release it, just exhale all the tension that might be in your shoulders, in your back, in your jaw, your neck. And let's take another deep breath in and hold it. And let's release that breath with a sigh. Ah, just releasing all the remaining tension. And let's just gently place our palms together and rub your fingers against your palms. Feel the sensation in your fingers. Feel the sensation in your palms. And allow that sensation to bring you present here right now to your body. And welcome. I have a lot to talk about today, and I'm hoping that I can speak it in a coherent fashion as it coalesces in my brain to become a little bit more clear. I've been thinking a lot about identity and um, what a shift in identity looks like. So many of us are looking to experience enlightenment and uh, revelation in our lives without realizing that the necessity for that awareness, that expansion, that enlightenment to occur, it means dissolution of the identities that we have come to know ourselves to be. So what's, what's interesting is that as we become more and more awake and aware, there's a falling away of these identities. And when that happens, what we're left with oftentimes in a transition period are extreme moments of confusion or dis depression or disorientation. And the reason for that, or even fear, is because we, the, the known is falling away. And what it's leaving us with is a, a vast uncertainty, a vast unknown of who will be, who, who we know ourselves to be, what is familiar, what we know. And uh, I've, I've been encountering or addressing this issue with a number of my coaching clients and have gone through this myself as well. Hi, Carol Ann. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, and I, I want to speak to it because the even the wonderful things that uh, we love about ourselves, like let's say uh, we have a deep commitment to service, to serving others. Well, I have a client who is has been more oriented to service than anyone I've ever met and uh, to her detriment. And what we've been working on is her being present to her soul's calling rather than an obligation or an, a feeling of obligation or responsibility that's outward by focusing outward um, and doing based on what we feel like we have we should have an obligation or responsibility to do uh, we often are not attendant to the true calling of our soul and so in the face of all of this doing that this person has been doing, I've been encouraging her to focus on what's, what is going on deeply in her own heart. And interestingly, what's arisen as disorientation and depression, because she f was finding that she didn't, she wasn't compelled to do all the external service work that she's been engaged with. And um, what we discovered in plumbing those depths was that she didn't know how to just be with herself and, and beyond the definitions with the external, like with what we do in the world. 
and um, in in letting go or starting to let go of the external identity of service, which we would all probably agree is a wonderful and powerful thing. In releasing that identity, what was left was, oh my gosh, who am I? I don't, I don't know how to orient myself. And one of the things that I notice about myself and folks that I have had the privilege to work with is that we cling to our identities of ourselves um, by as defined largely by what we produce in the outward world, whether it's money or service or a job or a product. And if that identity is removed, we find ourselves in a place of disorientation, fear, anxiety, depression, because the familiar is going away. And what's happening here is that there's a stripping away, a falling away, an opening. Good morning, Linda. Um, a falling away of the externalities that we have defined ourselves with to bring ourselves into a greater sense of presence and being. And the fear that people have encountered in looking at ex removing themselves, extricating themselves from these ideas of externalization is that they'll be doing nothing, that they'll be worth less. And the truth of it is that as we allow ourselves to re release our grasping onto who we think Think what we think we need to do as we release that what can emerge then is inspiration and that's the kind of the beauty and the um, the uh, dichotomy here where by letting go of what we believe we can emerge to who we truly are. And I see this on a microcosm and a macrocosm level right now in the world where so many of our systems are becoming disrupted through this virus. And uh, so many of our regular patterns have been disrupted and are falling away. And so many of us are experiencing a crisis of identity and the culture is also and the beauty of this crisis of identity of the falling away is that in allowing this this destruction of what exists and the dissolution of what exists we allow for the emergence of a deeper truth and a more uh, heartfelt more soul felt soul guided truth and expression in the world. So uh, I, I see this as a spectacular moment. In this um, destruction creation period, this dissolution and, and emergence period where, you know, we've all heard the uh, or we're all familiar with the metaphor of the caterpillar turning into a butterfly. There's this sense of, uh, or this moment where the old is stripped away and there is then a pregnant void in which the new can emerge. And that's what we're facing now, individually on a microcosm and globally in the macrocosm. Hey, Deb, welcome. So uh, just to, um, to summarize, uh, when, when there is a shift and a change, the, the fear or anxiety or depression or uh, confusion or um, uncertainty that emerges is a natural is a natural progression and it heralds the opportunity for a new emergence. So um, 
I, I remember years ago, I had the privilege of taking training with Tony Robbins. And one of the things that he said is, if you're confused, it means you're going to learn something. And in this case, it, it what I'm inviting you to entertain is if you're feeling uncertainty, it means that there's an opportunity for the emergence of the new. So that's the thought for today. Growth and change means a dissolution or a destruction of the old, which then can engender fear and uncertainty as there's this ego death or death of known identities. And then as that falls away, there's room for emergence of the new. And with that, I give you my love and deep compassion and gratitude for you providing me the opportunity to share this with you. And um, yeah, so today's invitation is to well the uncertainty and allow the opportunity for your truer expression to emerge with so much love.